Hey folks, it's Friday afternoon, about 6.30 p.m., uh, so no better time to start a new video series. For quite some time, we've been wanting to give you updates on some of the projects that we're working on that you are anxiously waiting for, as well as to lift the curtain a little bit into uh, the work that we do um, in the AKS team uh, every day and how we build some of those projects, how we make some of the engineering decisions and some of the technical details behind them. So um, we're going to start a new series that we're going to call AKS Me Anything, where we're going to be talking about some of the projects that we're working on and some of the updates about those projects. We're also going to be giving some spotlight to some of the team members in the AKS team that you might hear a bit less about and ask them uh, what they've been doing, some of the things that they've um, completed recently, some of the things that they're excited to be working on for the future, um, and just tell us overall some of the awesome work that they've done recently uh, that they can share with you. So right now we're here in Building 40 in Redmond, and we're going to see who's still around that we can potentially interview for this first edition of the AK Ask Me Anything. Um, so in, I think we have Juan Lee still here. Um, Juan Lee, do you have a minute? Yeah, of course. All right, so Wanli is uh, one of our engineering managers um, that is responsible for uh, the node um, and the node bootstrapping, for scaling, and a lot more um, functionality in AKS. So without further ado, hello, Wanli. Um, how about I can get you this mic? And turn it on if you can. All right. Let me have a seat. And how about, so first of all, thank you uh, for getting uh, and talking to our AKS community. Uh, what can you tell us about what you've done today? Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Uh, well, today I've been uh, looking into uh, what looks like a bit of a performance regression in node provisioning latency. Oh, no. Yeah, so I've been digging into traces, you know, trying to understand, uh, you know, where the issue is, pinpoint exactly what's taking a long time and, and, and hopefully be able to figure out what's going on and get it fixed. It looks like uh, the slowness is, is possibly from one of the network health checks that, uh, that we have. Uh, and I think it's not as big of an issue as I thought it was earlier. So that's a good thing. That's good. Um, it's Friday afternoon. The weekend's closed. So hopefully we're going to get that solved fast. Exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> it's, look, it's looking like it's maybe a, a corner case. So it's maybe not a big issue, uh, but we'll figure it out nonetheless. Cool. And so what, what are some of the things that you and your team have done this week, for example, that you can tell our audience? Well, uh, we have been doing a lot around performance. Uh, uh, one of the engineers on the team named Alyssa Vu sent out a really nice report about pod startup latency last week and cool. she was able to collaborate with one of the engineers Cameron Meisner on my team to go and root cause and 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 fix this issue so, so what was the issue about yeah so uh, it, it was a really interesting issue actually so the issue was that uh, kubelet would start up and it wants to go and join the cluster mm -hmm. and so what would happen is we would use the bootstrap token to go and request the permanent credentials. And what ends up happening is Kubelet starts up, it, end, it, it starts up a bunch of Go routines, and it starts what they call shared informers, and it wants to populate caches. Well, with the bootstrap token, it doesn't have permissions to actually access those uh, resource types. Mm -hmm. So they begin to exponential back off, and okay. eventually, uh, you know, time between those backoffs gets longer and longer, um, extending the time it takes for the node to become ready. And so once the certificate is, rec uh, is actually downloaded and installed, mm -hmm. uh, there's still a bunch of time uh, in order for all those caches to uh, sync. And so... So how are we fixing that? So the way that we're fixing that is basically ahead of Kubelet startup, mm -hmm. we go and ensure that uh, you know, we use the bootstrap token to go and fetch the credentials and ensure that those credentials are available before we actually start the kubelet. And that way, all of those Go routines can start up, access the API server right away, and, and hopefully have the fastest performance. 
Awesome, so awesome. Things are looking good. Everything, everything that we can shave is great for improving scale time. That's super important for our users. Uh, what else about the, the work that your team is doing that you're excited about? What can you tell us a bit about more about future prospects and things like that? Yeah, so we've been working a lot to make sure that we can deliver uh, new known images uh, with you know, all the CVE patches of, you know, for known issues as fast as we can. And so the team's been hard at work, uh, really trying to ensure that every step of the secure supply chain that we have, from building binaries to building container images, um, and every, basically all the dependencies that go into you know, the AKS VHD uh, are, are available in a timely manner and available uh, you know, hopefully by the next release. So we have a weekly re release process. And so the idea is that whenever there's a known CVE that comes up, it should be in the next uh, VHD release, the next uh, weekly node image release. And so, yeah, the team has been working hard to make sure that we have, uh, you know, all the proper container, you know, container builds that we can actually get patches, you know, even before upstream is uh, able to, you know, patch those images in, in an automated way, just pick those up uh, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, of course, flag and report on all of the issues that we do find. That's just a small part of the, the daily routine for building VHD images, isn't it? Uh, and getting all of that so quickly to, to achieve our 30-day SLA of, of getting all patches is such an important work. Absolutely. Uh, what else? What else can you tell me about that the team is doing that makes you excited about? Well, uh, so this week, actually, I think it was yesterday, we had a design review for a feature called VHD caching. Oh, well, new stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And so VHD caching is uh, a really important feature for AKS for a couple of reasons. So the first reason is there's oftentimes uh, our users have uh, issues uh, with with node startup latency, mm -hmm. or not necessarily node startup latency, but their workload startup latency. At yeah, the time it takes for their, their app to start on, on a new node, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so uh, sometimes that can be uh, the container image download. Mm -hmm. and, some, and a lot of times, well, so some of these large images, you know, Windows is a good example, mm -hmm. where the base image, if, you, if you're not using uh, nano server core, mm -hmm. it can be uh, two or three gigabytes. Yeah, server core is like very, very large yeah. compared to nano, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if we can cache some of those images right. on the VHD before, uh, you know, you you we, you know you kind of go and provision the node, right. then it can re it reduce the, the time that it takes and the, you know, the amount of bytes that you need to download from the internet. So isn't that something that could be solved as well with things like artifact streaming? Yes, I, you know, artifact streaming is a good feature. I think there's different use cases for, you know, these uh, different features like artifact streaming. And so, for example, in, in this case, you would use this more. So in artifact streaming, something more like large images where you have maybe a lot of programs and a lot of processes that start up sequentially is a good example. But then if you have something like, oh, our favorite topic, right? Like AI, ML, yep. workloads that have like a bunch of files in the container image. I mean, that all needs to be downloaded yep. to start. So what you're saying is one of the problems there is that since artifact streaming can help on those cases, you're looking at doing what on the node to help out? So, well, <laughs> well we're, we're looking to make sure that that you know, those images are available on startup so that we don't have to do any downloads. So and how, how are they going to be available at startup in the node if, the, if it's a new node? Oh, yeah, that's right. So we're going to provide an experience uh, so that users can configure uh, the download of container images ahead of time mm -hmm. so that we can actually pre-populate those images in the VHD before the node starts up. Uh, I see. And really customize it in a way. I see. And so me as a user, I'm going to pass out uh, like a script or something to you, and then you're going to how, like download those images into the existing node, and then what? That's right. So we actually use a technique where we go and create the VM, create a VM with our base node image, mm -hmm. and then apply, uh, you know, this script. Run your script. Mm -hmm. uh, that script, you know, can download some container images, mm -hmm. and then we take that. Uh, and snapshot it into a shared image gallery. Um, and then, of course, we, we delete the VM that we use to, uh, you know, create the snapshot. Mm -hmm. And then we apply that to the node pool. Yep. And then we'll use your customized image, you know, from there on with the node pool. So, so basically we made that custom image, the new, uh, 
de facto image of that node pool that we'll use from that point on. How, how does it get? How does that work with like upgrades and things like that? Yeah, I think I think this is the beauty of it. So one of the major asks that we get a lot of time is to bring your own node image, and never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Uh, you know, some of the challenges that are involved with delivering a node image are really, you know, some of the things that I talked about before around, you know, making sure that you have all the patches and, you, you, you know, you have those all up to date. We have a whole team, you know, is working hard to, you know, make sure that, you know, we, you know, we, can, we can have that in a tam timely manner. Well, if you bring your own node image, you have to do that all yourself. Now, VHD caching is a bit of a compromise where we meet you in the middle. So we still provide the whole process from building the VHD to delivering it to your cluster, ensuring that it works with all the different Kubernetes versions, do all, you know, do all the testing, integration testing for Kubelet, Containerd, you know, all of the dependencies and components that we have on the node. Um, but then we also apply your Delta. And so you can rely on our, you know, all the testing, all the validation, everything that goes into these node images, mm -hmm. plus get the additive mm -hmm. stuff that you would like to do. So, yeah, so it doesn't the, work just for container images either. It could work for some additional configurations I might want to put in, even that's some, right. that's pretty cool. And then I don't even need to worry about building an image from scratch because you're going to build it for me. I'm just going to tell you the recipe, like what I want. Exactly, exactly. Very and good. so, yeah, we're going to pro provide an API to, you know, essentially create a recipe for the delta that you can put on top of the node images that we already build. And instead of you having to go and, uh, you know, toil over, you know, building these VHDs, making, you know, we're going to do this every week. Um, well, we'll, you know, we'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to, you know, if you have what, just one line, let's just say, for example, you want to change one sysctl. Well, instead of having to build the whole node image and you know, kind of staff a team to produce those images every time you want to upgrade your cluster, well, you can just put that line in there in, into our API, and then you know, we'll do all of the rest for you. So saying, for example, when, when I have something like a new node image mm -hmm. upgrade mm -hmm. coming in, how would that look like for... Like, what's the difference between what a node image upgrade is today and if I'm using that VHD caching feature? Yeah, so it should really be transparent to the user. So as long as you've, you know, previously uh, uh, created that customization, mm -hmm. uh, every time, uh, so uh, if you enable something like uh, node image auto upgrade, mm -hmm. uh, we will pick that up and we will go through that process again. And so as long as you define that customization, that node, node pool that you have will always have that customization. Through every update that we go and do to that node pool, we'll make sure that your patch is applied and that the resulting image and the resulting nodes have all of those changes. That is pretty awesome. Well, thank you very much. I'll let you fix, uh, like finish the, the work that you're doing to uh, fix that regression uh, where you can go home to your weekend. And thank you very much for participating in the first AKS Me Anything. So this is about it, folks. Um, I hope it was helpful to you to know a bit more about some of the things that we're build, building here and know a bit more about the work that Wan Lee and his team has been doing. We hope to run this fairly seldomly, but about you know every week or at least a few times a month. And hope to see you tune on the next one. Thank you very much and have a great weekend.